Hey, hey guys, you're tuning into the Mina B podcast. It's your girl Mina B, and I am back with yet another fun filled episode. So, where to find me? It's at the Mina B podcast over on Instagram. Be sure to follow me over there at the Mina B podcast over on IG. All links in bio for every possible podcast listening platform that you want to hear my show, you can find that over there. So, of course, we are on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, Spotify. So, you guys know what to do over on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening for the first time, be sure to rate and subscribe. Make sure to leave me a review. Let me know that you felt with the show and you like what I'm talking about. All of that good stuff. And, of course, if you're watching from home over on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to keep your notifications on. Got a couple of videos that I'll be dropping. So, yes, y'all already know what time it is. If y'all have been watching my show, listening to my show, you guys know it's my 100th episode. Oh, my God, y'all. 100 episodes. Who am I? Y'all, y'all already know. I've been doing this show solo dolo. I am the producer. I am the writer. I am the editor, the camera person, the end-all be-all. I am a one-woman show. So this is not necessarily the easiest thing to do to keep up with. Um, the show started off as a bi-weekly um, show. So, of course, twice a month I did an episode. Um, and after, during the COVID and the pandemic and everything like that, I was able to be at home and able to do episodes weekly. And um, it has been such a pleasure working with so many wonderful people, having the conversations that I'm having, getting the feedback that I've gotten from so many people and so many listeners. And I thank you guys so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart for fucking with the Mina B podcast. Like y'all could be anywhere in the world listening to so much other things, but you guys tune in with me and shout out to anybody who watches the YouTube. You know, the YouTube channel started back in September. Um, so just a little bit over a year and um youtube is a whole other beast it is not it's not easy over there um so i am very 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 happy and so pleased with people who do comment and do uh, repost every repoot post i am so 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 grateful for you guys sharing and liking my content and having conversations about the content that i produce i am utterly utterly blessed and i thank you guys so so much y'all already know so for those who don't um, the Mean and Be podcast started off with an episode called He's a Fuckboy. Um, it started off, that was an actual, a, actual blog, um, that I had written. Um, I used to have a blog so many years ago called the Mean and Be, the com, And during the blogging error, uh, so to speak. And it was a, definitely a labor of love. And of course, podcasting became so interesting, so intriguing, and I was an avid fan of podcasts. I was like, I can do a podcast. I can listen. I can definitely ramble and talk my head off about a, a plethora of topics. So that's how it started. I recorded it, hit the ground running, and here we are. So, um, you know, I was doing a, a bi-weekly. You know, we was doing bi-weekly and got into doing weekly. So, of course, it has definitely been a labor of love. My show is definitely a labor of love. It has not been the easiest thing for me to do, but I love it so, 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 so much. So, um, I know that there are many, many podcasters out there that get that start and then they see what it entails and they never really make it far, so to speak. So, for me, 100 episodes um, over these past couple of years means the world to me because it means that I definitely put my best foot forward even when on days that I didn't want to, even on days where I had the content written, a whole episode and I was sick or I wasn't feeling it or I was going through drama with a nigga, you know, because it wouldn't be the meeting of you podcast when you talk about these hoes. So, you know, just things like that. And of course, last year, y'all know I was working from home and I was absolutely miserable with the company that I was working for. You know, um, COVID definitely, definitely took a toll on all of us being at home. Um, it was a great year. Even this year has been great, but it's also been very eye-opening. Um, I've gotten a lot of different opportunities, not only for the podcast, but just for myself professionally. So I'm just like, yo, this has been a wonderful thing that I've been able to continue to do. And like I said, y'all, I am 
never, ever, ever, ever taking for granted anybody who has ever shared or liked or, you know, utilized any of my content because I know for a fact that y'all fuck with the show and I, I, I am forever, 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 forever grateful. Um, so y'all already know how the start of the show was. So going forward, um, I definitely would like more hosting opportunities um, now that the world is opening up a little bit more. Um, and you know, I have a couple of things that I want to do as far as like little short episodes, a couple of things, Q and A tidbits on, you know, um, current events, things of that nature. So you guys are going to get a lot more content from me. Um, but the me to be podcast will be taking a short hiatus, not a long one, a short one. Um, your girl is tired. Your girl is tired. Um, I have a lot to think about and a lot that I want to put in perspective um, as far as my shows and as far as my, my brand is concerned, the Mina B brand is concerned. So of course, I will definitely not be leaving y'all hanging. I definitely will be posting things over on the Mina B podcast page. And of course, if you follow my personal page, you know, I do a lot of talking over there as well. So this is not a goodbye. It's not the end, but we're going to do a little bit of shaping and molding and Fixing things, or fix, fixing things up a little bit um, and just trying some new content um, going forward. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, I want to say a thank you to all the collaborators, friends, family, podcasters, fellow podcasters that have embraced me and loved on me and definitely helped me. I've been on their shows. They've been on mine. You know, all of that. I am so, so grateful to this podcasting community. Um, to brand managers, to people that I've collaborated with and just have had the most amazing conversations. I thank you guys so, 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 so very much. Um, the journey for the Mina B podcast is it's not over. Mina B is definitely going to be here and I want y'all to stay tuned for this, this week. Um, so I have an event coming up that I will be celebrating for the 100th episode of the Mina B podcast. So definitely stay tuned as I drop visuals for that. But this episode is not over. Don't ever get it twisted. We're going to listen. Listen, I chose 10 episodes that I absolutely loved, absolutely adored. And I wanted to share it with you guys, especially some people that may have not have just started listening, stuff like that. So my favorite 10 episodes, I'm going to drop some clips on this episode for you guys to watch and enjoy and listen to and enjoy because I did only start video last year so a lot of the podcast is all audio but stay tuned because i got a couple of clips so you guys can backtrack listen to them and the show's still on the platforms y'all it's going to be available it's not going to be a long hiatus i promise you but your girl needs a break okay she's tired so stay tuned i got something for y'all so you guys know that the first episode that I ever dropped was He's a Fuckboy. So I'm going to drop a clip of He's a Fuckboy for you guys to listen to. It was 10 different ways and different signs on how these men do for the ladies to know how to spot it, how to know what's going on in your love life, whether you're talking, dating, in a relationship. Just know that your dude is a fuckboy and I gave the tidbits on how. Tune in to the clip. I think this is the last one. Um, he only courted you for the season. Only courted you for the season. Hmm. Now, I have to say, beware of the winter bay situations because dudes would definitely start acting fucking funny around March, <laughs> April, when it starts this, you know, springtime. Like, that shit is prevalent. Y'all already know what time it is. Want to pick arguments, all kind of shit. Um, we'll start talking to you around August, anywhere between August and October, you know, talking, texting, flirting, a couple of dates here and there. This kind of guy will definitely try to ease his way into Netflix and chill after some dates and, you know, it's getting colder, so you want to cuddle and you want to, no, nigga, we, we going out, put on that good Sherlin, put on that good bubble <laughs> and we're going out to go have a drink, to go to the skating rink, whatever it is, we're going to figure that out. But anyway, I digress. Um, so on episode 44, which was a bonus episode, I had the pleasure 
of chatting with Shanika Adams, model, entrepreneur. Um, we talked about so many things in that episode. It's called What's the Tea? And of course, we got the tea, honey. She was giving us and dropping jewels, okay? We had such a wonderful time and such a wonderful episode. So be sure to check the clip that I'm about to drop. Alone. So, okay. So, this is the thing. Because yeah. there's just always this stigma of black women dating white men, mm -hmm. black men dating white women, because mm -hmm. we, we just frown on that. It's so negative. Ah, ah, ah. But for me, my family members and my family dynamic on both sides of the family, we are so interracially inter intertwined mm -hmm. ma through marriage and all of that. Same as my family. So, it's just yeah. very like normal for me exactly it is normal it's normal for me to see so mm -hmm. i have an issue with people saying that if you're dating a white guy or you know if you're dating a white woman that you you're not necessarily woke you're not necessarily um what was the term Oh. Whatever it was. Whatever it was. Who it just it just it just kinda it just kinda irked me because it was like, well, how come like I can fight for issues, I can still talk about the things that the injustices that are happening in the country. I'm Absolutely. getting I'm totally getting political on you guys. But, no, but you um, can. Who and says you can I like I, I it always ends up into politics over here on the Mean to Be podcast. So it's people, like I stay away from people like that. It's too it's too draining. Bro, I, I it's just like I'm like Yes. The only issue I've ever had and I've seen happen on numerous occasions is the fetishizing. The the fet am I saying it right? The fetishizing yes. of black you, women. Yes, it is. I don't yes. like that. Don't yeah. sir. <laughs> and you'll know when someone sir, is fetishizing. And you'll and you'll know it. You'll know and you'll know it. So yeah. I I haven't I only experienced that once, but I have seen it with like two homegirls of mine. I was just like, girl, you don't fuck yeah. you. I've experienced that too, and I cut you off immediately. I'm nobody's fetish pet. Yeah, so I just I don't. I'm, I'm like, a what is the person? What is okay? that about? Like, <laughs> let me just date a black girl. Like, like you're pretty for a black girl. I want to date you. What? What? If someone says anything like that, you need to just go the opposite way, because that means that they're fetishizing you. Right. That's trash. I I just I never understood that. I'm like, oh. You're pretty for a black I'm girl. I'm pretty for a black girl. Get out of here. Like, <laughs> sir, you're really out of control. But how is, so for, like, again, for okay. me, like, I have a multiracial background, like, mm -hmm. family members, all of that. I haven't dated a white guy since college. Mm -hmm. The guy that I dated in college, he was cute. He was Italian, Puerto Rican, nothing, nothing crazy. No, nothing happened, no sex, nothing like that. So I don't have anything to go off of. He was super sweet. It wasn't anything like that. But mm -hmm. he wanted a relationship. I didn't. And that was just that. I was in college. I was turned up. Mm -hmm. But after that, I'm like, I feel like white guys do are scared to approach us. They're not scared to approach me. So what's the tea? <laughs> okay, so what's, what's the tea, sis? I want to know. Because I feel like I really, I feel like, <laughs> I'm like, you know. Outside of the whole fetishizing thing, I don't want to ever experience something like that. But I've always said that I would be open to dating a white guy at least at least one time. Just that I just want to know or whatever. Uh, I don't... Honestly, I can't really... You know, I guess it's environment. The mm -hmm. places that I go, I don't really... I'm not in environments where I'm predominantly around, you know... I'm predominantly around those type of people. Mm -hmm. So whatever you are around is what you are going to attract. And it's not that I'm just trying to date white guys. You know, I attract all types of guys. Mm -hmm. But I want to date provider men, regardless of the race, the color, whatever. But I definitely feel like you just have to go wherever the people are that you want to date, but white or black. So mm -hmm. professional guys, provider guys, you have to go to the upscale places that they are. Stop going to the hookah bars and, you know, those types of clubs and those types of places. If those are not the type of men that you right. want to date, because that's what you're going to run into. I like to be around good people, good vibes, successful people. And I want to meet provider men. I'm a single woman. So I'm going to put myself in those environments. So that's what you have to do. And you have to care about 
everything how you look Mm -hmm. but most importantly who you are on the inside and how you feel because those vibes will attract good vibes absolutely i agree there i attract i attract men that want to provide for me i attract men that want to take care of me these are things I say to myself, and it happens. Well, I'm about to write so that down on the affirmations like list because <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to rewrite that on the affirmations. Yes, I, I attract provider men. I do, I do. Me myself, I mm-hmm. do. I attract, you know, provider men. I attract men that want to take care of me. I attract loyal men, respectful men, intelligent men, and all that. Stop going to those places if you don't want to beat those type of people, right? Because that's what you're gonna keep running into. You have to change your environment. You have to go where you are uncomfortable sometimes if you want things to change. You can't keep going to the same place and mm-hmm. expecting different results from people. Try something different. And it's not just about dating white guys. Just in general, you want to go. So episode 69 was very interesting to say the least. It was Lori in the hotels. And I wanted to explain to the masses how Lori Harvey was the GOAT and how y'all was going to put some respect on her name. Check out this clip. Um, so here we are. We, we're all saying Lori is the GOAT. And I need y'all to understand why. Why is Lori Harvey the GOAT? Three reasons why Lori Harvey is the GOAT. So here we go. Let me step real quick so we can get into it. Okay, number one, she's showing y'all exactly what a 24-year-old woman is supposed to be doing. Like, I'm sorry. What else is she supposed to be doing at her age? What else was she supposed to be doing last year and the year before that? Huh? I'll wait. I'll wait. Because last time I checked, when you're in your 20s, you're supposed to date. You're supposed to figure things out. You're supposed to get into relationships and it be a three, four week serious ass relationship that don't really mean nothing because he did something or she did something and y'all move on or y'all got into a big blowout and y'all move on. You know, you're temperamental. You're figuring life out. What else are you supposed to be doing? Huh? I mean, for me, right, I had a boyfriend at 21, right? Blew me away. Great conversation. We absolutely adored each other. So I thought, whatever, 21, you don't know no better, right? He was fucking around on me, running around Brooklyn, embarrassing the fuck out of me. All my friends knew about it. I mean, again, I was so hurt, so butthurt about it. I didn't get over it for a long time. So... I graduated college, started traveling, started having fun. And I mean, I, I mean I'm living in New York City. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a New York girl. So I'm standing on couches, hanging out with promoters, drinking with my girls, having the best time of my life. And I may have had a little promoter boo at the time, fucked him, hung out with this person, hung out with that, took a trip with this person, took a weekend with this person, hung out. It wasn't like... Oh, I was hoeing, hoeing, but I had a whole face in my 20s. And I'm not saying that that's what Lori's doing right now. Also, understand this. There also is a moment where you can be a serial monogamous. So every time you're with somebody, like, you know, you have like a core couple of months that you're figuring things out and you're with that one person. So 
doesn't necessarily mean you're a hoe because I've been there as well. So anyway, anyway, that was my experience at 23, 24. She's not doing nothing, any, nothing different, okay? So number two, she's doing it in the public eye and all the while maintaining mystery about the details of said relationships, period. It's not an easy task because think about how many other people and I mean, Lori hasn't been on a reality show, so I can't say she's like the reality TV girls where we kind of know all their business on all the blogs. But I will say this. If Lori was really a ho, 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 regardless of how she keeps things together or not and how, you know, things work out for her, I don't, I don't, I think if she was a really, really a ho and really doing scandalous shit, Nigga, I think the blogs would have picked up on that shit a long time ago. That's just my opinion. I really think so. I really think so. I mean, the fact that dudes are sitting in comments on IG, like, you know, certain IG posts about Lori and, and, and Michael B. Jordan, and even on Clubhouse, like, they're just sitting there talking about she's a hoe. How is she a hoe? Maybe she's simply a serial monogamous. Have y'all ever thought about that? Yo, some of y'all niggas is serious, a serial monogamous. Like, huh? I don't understand that rhetoric. What? How? How does that make her a hoe? Y'all just love to call people hoes without having some details and having some like knowledge of what the fuck is really going on. Let's... A hoe? Again, she's doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing as a 24-year-old woman. Period. We're not in the 50s. We're not getting married. Again... Some people may be getting married young, but th that's just not the course of this generation right now. It's just not. So she ain't a hoe, y'all. I just need y'all to cut that shit out. And number three, number three, drum roll, please. She did not get pregnant by future. She did not get pregnant by future, okay? Can we applaud her for this? <laughs> applaud her, sis. You was focused. You stayed the course. Whatever was going on. Pull out game was strong or you wasn't having it or the, the, the birth control was in control, baby. Because she did not have a baby by bum ass. Let me not say bum ass future. But she did not have a baby by future. Okay? We all know how we feel about him. He is toxic, 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 toxic. I don't think that Lori is toxic. Again, I think that Lori is doing exactly what the fuck she's supposed to be doing. And that's just the bottom line. I, I just hate the rhetoric. I hate the idea that women have to live in a bubble. Women have to be, it's okay for men to be hoes. It's okay for men to have a string of women or whatever. But when someone's doing it in the limelight and y'all don't have all the details and all the finite, you know, points about everything about this person and how and where and why, y'all automatically think the person's a hoe because they've been with this one, this one, and this one, and this one. She's a beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. These men that she's dating, I mean, did he? I, I don't even know the course of how that went. We, you know, she's never denied or spoke. So a recent episode that I did, episode 97, me and a good friend, friend of the show, Purcell Duggar, we talked about open relationships and boundaries because baby i think a lot of us in the dating community like you know the brothers need to learn boundaries and i think the sisters need to understand how to set them properly and appropriately so tune in to our chat as he gives us a couple of tidbits on those boundaries do i look like the woman that would date you or that's take you hilarious. seriously that's hilarious or look your way. I'm glad no one's ever voiced those words. I would never say that. Oh, okay. You could, you could, I mean, a bitch could say that. That's disrespectful. That's kind of rude. But I would never say that. It's like a thought process in my mind. I'd be saying that shit like, nigga, don't so like, talk to you. How, how do you set like that boundary with somebody you did shot? Is it based off just pure like, there was a little vibe, they had a little conversation, or they're attractive, or they're not attractive? And then based so, off that, you kind of like discern like how you Outside of being a bartender, when it has happened, I just kind of shut it down. Like, I may lie and say I have a man. Um, and there's been times where I flat out said I wasn't interested because I just wanted to see what they were going to say. Because it's like, who's going to check me? I'm around people and you're not going to try me in here. So what happened? Um, yeah, I'm not really interested. So you're not seeing nobody right now? I'm like, yeah, I am, but nothing serious. But, you know, I'm just not really interested in 
Like, I think men need to understand and hear it. No, mm. I'm not interested. Mm. It, 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 and I would ask, is that okay with you? But I really don't give a fuck. Like, right. I'm not interested. Right. Men need to hear that. Men, yeah. men need to get that I- idea. I think it's important to kind of set those boundaries with folks. Like, when, yeah. they, when they shoot, like, I'm, I'm from the approach of, like, shoot or shoot. Right. right. If I'm James Harden, I'm Steph Curry, I'm Russell Westbrook, you put me in the game, I'm getting buckets. Right? That's what I'm supposed to do. That's my job. And I got one job and I do it really well. Right? How I do it, I like to make girls laugh. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to say something funny. I'm going to say something slick. I'm going to get you to ha <laughs> that clown for And then me. after that, I'm like, oh, what you doing, lady? You want to do da 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 Whatever, whatever. Right. right? But I say all that to say that if, when it's made very clear, no. <laughs> Not fucking with yeah. it. I'm not vibing. It's yeah. a it's a dub. I'll be the first one to exit stage left. It's not a, even about embarrassment. It's just like I don't want to be the guy who could anyone could ever say like they made me uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. the moment mm-hmm. you say you good, sis. Have a good night. Right. Get home safe. And I think a lot of the times when talking to men, there's so much ego involved, and I just be like. So on episode 76, I had the pleasure of chatting it up with my little sis, uh, my sister Kat, shout out to Kat. So we were able to do a sibling episode together and chop it up and talk about our family, talk about mess, talk about current event tea and who's the better dresser and all that sibling rivalry bullshit. But I love my baby and we had a great episode. So tune in to our sisterly love you take you on dates whatever hang out whatever we'll do but we're not together it's a situation shit but if you go and do something or you go out and it's a problem a date, it's a big ass issue it's a problem it's a big ass problem. It's a problem so that goes across the board and you know fun let's just say it just hasn't changed in the last five years it hasn't okay all right so that, that makes sense but when i was 25 at your age i was living the time of my life I'm having fun. It, it just sucks. Yeah. I'm in a Panda Express. Still on the Panda Express. But I feel like I had moved to Atlanta at your age. And I was just figuring things out. Because I feel like that's what you were doing right now. You're figuring things mm-hmm. out. Trying to figure out what career path you want to take. What feels right to you. What makes sense financially. It, all of that I get. But like, I was having fun. I was dating here and there. I even snagged me a little boo for a little while. Then I, we, we broke it off. And then you're like, it just, you, 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 you're experiencing life. Yeah. Um, you're experiencing other people Still young. in that, in that moment as well. And it, it's like, it's a good time. It's a good age. It's yeah. a really good age. You know, you don't have That's to, what they said. you don't have to feel, <laughs> no, for real. you don't have to feel pressed to, I don't think I started feeling pressed or pressured. I had, I hit a bump at 27 and then I hit a major bump at 30 because I was like, Ooh, okay. 30 was a great year. 30 was a great time. Fun fact, we're 10 years apart. She, she doesn't like to. No, we're like 20 years apart because she treat me like I'm 14 or 12 or something. I don't treat you like you're 14 or 12 because we talk about everything. My baby sister. But I, I consider you my baby sister because you are my baby sister. You're a calm 10 years younger than me. Yeah. Even though we're very close, we're best friends, I still consider you the baby for me because I don't have babies. So you were the baby, and that's you're the only baby that I know. I don't even have god kids. Yeah, I don't have I don't have any god children. Oh wow. Yeah, no. I don't have any god kids. So sorry, you're the one. Until I have kids, you're the one. I mean, at least I get to you, at least I still want to baby you. Like there's people that there's women that have really there I, I know girls that have sisters and they have great relationships, but I also know women that have horrible relationships with their sisters. Oh, that's like hatred like jealousy and it's and lived in the same house together and shit like that so i think we're kind of fortunate to be this age and be that far apart in age but be that close yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, that's true yeah You're right yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but at your age again when i was your age i just i literally was just having fun and figuring things out and i think that's exactly where you are that's where i'm at really um, <laughs> i think my dating life at that time was dope so i just feel like damn bitch i think <laughs> but also 10 years ago it might have been a little bit different i don't know and, and i don't, also, I don't and remember also, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest. I, I was in new york for a stint um but at 25 i was moving to atlanta so when i moved mm-hmm. to atlanta like nigga, it was what it was lit like what we had a great time honey we were standing on couches we was talking to niggas we I was standing on the couch in one year i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i mean it was a good time say, say, to say the least it was a good time so 
I'm trying to think, what was I doing at 25? So I moved to Atlanta. I got a job. I got laid off. I was working for a PR company. Got laid off. Moved to Atlanta. Got another job at another company. Got laid off because right at that time it was um, the end. Like, so, yeah, it was like towards the end of the recession. And then um, mm -hmm. I started waitressing and bartending because I had my bartending um, li um, license um, and sort of certification from New York. And I just was like networking and doing things and doing freelance jobs mm -hmm. here and there, freelance marketing jobs, freelance PR jobs. I did work with a lot of different events and stuff like that. I was on my fucking grizzly. I was on my grind, but I felt like I was doing a lot at one time and it was stressful and it was very like overwhelming. My, okay. amb my ambition overwhelmed me. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, I was like, my, I'm ambitious. I'm doing all this stuff. Where's the money at? So that's why I went, came back to New York. Okay. Um, at 27 going on 28 but it was a good time i'm happy i did it because i think me leaving home i think whenever you leave home mm -hmm. you get a better understanding it's, and not, not even home new york whenever you leave new york and you go somewhere else whether it's for school whether it's for work or it's just to try something different you always appreciate home but you always get a better understanding of what life really should be because i feel like new york life is just like unreal you know, it's, it's sad it's sad <laughs> That's the perfect way. I think I was yeah. having a conversation with my waxer, which was like a little eye opening to me. She kept mentioning that New York is kind of toxic. It is. It, it's kind of toxic. It's kind of like I hated it. At, it's after like a while. it's kind of like that cloud that's over you, like. Everybody's on the grind, but are we really grinding? No, like, I ain't doing shit. And then it's like a but lot of people my age. We're not even paying rent. We're living with our parents. Yep. We're a little frustrated because it's like, damn, like still living with your parents, and you want to be an adult, but living in new york is so expensive so you can't even get a spot on your own but you're making a lot of money and you drink it twice a week maybe three hello times. Maybe, three maybe three times, times. where the drinks and links at that's all we know in new york and the hookah drinks and, and hookah, hookah. <laughs> drinks links the and drinks hookah. links and hookah it's kind of like i don't know but i mean it, new york does have pros like there's pros and cons of living in new york. so on episode 67 I had the pleasure of sitting down and chatting it up with the owners of Condition Her, Eugenia Marshall and Wendy Berry. Baby, we talked about feminine hygiene, all things myths about the vagina. I mean, y'all can tune in. Y'all already know that was a great episode. Check out all the things we chatted about. Ladies, so we're grown. You already know. We we gr we grown grown. We grown grown. And I find it amazing how some of us, some of us women still in our late 20s to early 40s still don't know the fundamentals of our vaginas, right? I mean, like just coming and going and need to smell like a flower. So I pulled a couple of myths from the internet, you know, woman's yes. world. Yes, get get them together. So, Myth number one, this was this was interesting to me. Myth number one, vaginal discharge means you have a yeast infection. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. You Myth know what's interesting yeah. about this is that yeah. I have my, my daughter's in college at, at Tennessee <laughs> State University, uh, HBCU in the house. Yeah. Um, and um, what's really interesting is when she comes home and she shares with me things that they've shared with each other. So this, that's where these myths get started is when right. you're in that 18 to 22 year old zone in college with your girls and you're just starting to experience your body. And right. um, this is one of those things where they're sharing secrets with each other and self-diagnosing. And now you have Google, like it's adding a whole nother layer to that. Exactly. So th there's this myth and it's, it's not only a myth with women, it's also a myth with men, which I think is kind of funny because they think that vaginal discharge is just nasty or something's wrong with you because of it. Hilarious. And Listen. <laughs> it's the most normal thing possible. It's, it's, it, it's, in an, it's cleaning you out. Your vagina naturally cleans itself out. The organ cleans itself and it will release a liquid. So it's just like, Y'all, y'all are humans. We're, I'm human. You're human. Man, man, a woman, woman, a woman. And y'all think something's wrong with that? Now, <laughs> I, I just, I like I it. grown ups, y'all grown up. Y'all, it's called secretions. And we all got <laughs> secretions every day. Ladies, 
If you want to know what's going on with your secretions, if it is just natural every day, you got to get to know your own body. And there's a lot, like you said, of grown ass women out there that A, just heard the term vulva for the first time. Cause y'all don't remember back to third and fourth grade and they gave us that little map. They gave us the map a long time ago, third, fourth grade, human sexuality, human ana just anatomy, basic anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, ladies, smell your panties every day. As soon as you get home from work and all that and all the good stuff, smell them. You gonna know what's the regular little coochie odor, little, you know, smell a little hot. That's that's okay, but you also know that twinge that you, you yeast infection and bacterial infections they have they have a scent, you know what I mean? They have a different and you you can smell that. Uh, and if you if you let it go un, unnoticed or or un, untreated for a long time, and it's an actually is a yeast infection or a bacterial infection, especially when you get towards the bacterial uh, vaginosis and the bacterial infection, you do need to seek your doctor. But yeast infections, there are things you know oh, you know things in your own that you eat daily in your daily diet and your daily diet. And we'll, we'll talk about that later when we get into intimate uh, skincare regimens, which everyone should have one. And a lot of you probably do, but you've never really thought of it as a regimen. Um, but you have one and, and some, some of yours just needs a little tweaking right. or enhancing um, so that you're more intentional about your regimen. Uh, we do a lot of things in that bathroom when that door closes behind that shower curtain that we just don't talk about. Like no one's like calling your bestie, like, Girl, how you wash your coochie? Do you go from left to right, side to side, up and down, back to front? Like, what do you? We don't really ask that. You know what I mean? Right. I talk about a lot of other things, but so yeah, it's you know, smell your panties. Let your body get to know your natural scent. So when she's off, um, or he, whatever you refer to that area is, um, you know. Exactly. So funny. It, same thing with the discharge. Myth number two: mm. If your vagina smells, you yeah. have an STI. And the thing about it is we do have a natural odor. Eau de la pousse. Eau de pousse. Eau de pousse. Eau de pousse. <laughs> hey, Erica, Erica Badu is making some money off of hey, that. Hey. Yes. <laughs> okay. And it, 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 you, and again, just like what, what Wendy said, you have to smell yourself to know yeah. what it is. If you know, you have to get in tune or touch your body and know, you know, what it is. So there's normal scent. And then there's, you know, the scent that's like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. That's off. Mm -hmm. And that's when you go seek medical attention. So, yeah. And any sort of itching or burning or just feeling of discomfort. Like, listen, I, I, I don't know any woman that really hasn't had a, a yeast infection at some point. And if, if you don't know, little yeast infection, your little homegirl yeasty going to let you know when she's oh. there. Cause she going to let you know that something ain't right. You know what I mean? And, and not, it's not just an, an odor. So you so earlier in May, I had the pleasure of creating a new way to interview from the Mina B podcast. Um, and it's something that I really, really want to continue to do as, you know, the brand moves forward. Okay. So the influencers table was an opportunity for me to speak to some local it's local and, you know, other influencers all over the country. Um, definitely looking forward to do more of that. And this time around, I was able to sit down and chat it up with entrepreneur, host, and actress, Brie Renee, baby. And we had such a great conversation. So enlightening. I mean, she gave jewels, okay? We talked about leveling up. We talked about the business. And we also talked about women, ourselves, just basically loving ourselves and putting ourselves first and it was a great time great conversation that we had so definitely check out this clip he would definitely find you and i feel like that is the energy when everybody's always like what was sierra's prayer i don't think sierra's <laughs> prayer was for russell i feel like sierra's prayer was for her heal me fix me help me because once you build yourself up to that point everybody know how to approach you like, it, it's almost like your energy, your aura becomes a repellent for the fuck shit. Excuse me. But, you know what I'm saying? It becomes a repellent for that. It's like, nah, I'm not accepting nothing but what I deserve. This is how I treat myself. This is the energy that I'm carrying in myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I was. Like, And that's why I feel like my boyfriend now, this is the best relationship I've been in. But I definitely feel like it came from me taking that time to do exactly what you said you're doing starting therapy, addressing myself, correcting the, the behaviors that needed to be corrected, but also 
uplifting and keeping myself full and everything else. So it was like anybody that came around me, you had to improve the energy that I had or you can't be in this space, bro. Hey, that's the that's thing I'm talking about, like, and I'm saying this to my homegirls like I'm the expert and I'm not. It's just because I'm working on me currently. So I'm just like, I don't want no energy and you shouldn't want no energy to come around in your space. I mean, and I always talk highly about my homegirls. Like, my tribe, the girls, they are doing their thing. They're opening businesses. They're getting it popping. They're up in levels in their corporate jobs and doing what the fuck they're supposed to be doing. And y'all letting men come around, y'all, that shouldn't even be in your space. No. Shouldn't even be breathing your air you breathe in, baby. Like, I'm not about to sit here and take your mental abuse from nobody. Nobody's right any son that's not working on himself as well. But it's not alone. And it's not it's out of loneliness, and I think that until we learn to be fully happy with being alone, any we will accept anybody's bullshit just for company. But it's when we, like you said, I was so happy alone that I realized, oh, I be tripping. Like, I love me. You know what I'm saying? To the point that even now that I'm in a relationship, I still make sure that I carve out that time because I never want to forget me again. I never want to leave me again. You know what I mean? Because I had to go through that that phase, like that journey of what you're saying you're going through now when you reconnect with you. And I feel like, damn, why would I keep dumping her? And she is everything. You know what I'm saying? She is the longest relationship that I will ever have. So this one should be the best one. I agree. I agree. So, of course, it wouldn't be my show if we didn't talk about the hoes, but... So on episode 87, I brought back a friend to the show, Jackson1616, a previous host of Sex with Strangers podcast. So he's been on the show before and I had to get him to come back, okay? So we talked about in this episode, it was basically titled No Sex for You, Brokey. But, um, <laughs> but we were just talking about so many different things. It was two hours long. Um, we talked about interracial dating, um, just how the conversation between men and women in our community with Kevin Samuels, things like that, how it affects us, how it dampers our conversation and makes us more against each other than together. I mean, we talked about it all. So here's a clip of us chopping it up about interracial dating. Like, <laughs> the fuck? I mean, I don't talk that we make fun about the Toms, the Tims, the Asian man and all of that, but I don't, I don't want that man. I don't, I don't, I don't want that man. You know what I'm saying? And I hear it all the time. Date outside your race. You're going to fare better. You're going to be, no. Why can't I be with a man that I have good conversations with? We get along. Our family structures, our dynamics are similar. We come from the same background. Why the fuck can't I have that in my own community? Who's to, who has told you, who has recommended that, that you date outside? Women, women that have dated or married interracially. What are the reasons that they do? Like, what's the motivating factor? In why? I know, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, that just made me. You know, me... I, have to be, I have to be honest. So one of my, one of my, my, one of my primary examples, um, she, never, she never told me this to marry a white guy. She never said that. But I, I do have a, 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 an example. My cousin... Um, is married. She's been married to this man as long as I've been alive. They're a lot older than I am. They're like legit like my parents. <laughs> That's how old they are. I'm we're the youngest in the family. So they're like my parents, but they've been married as long as I've been alive. And they have a beautiful relationship. I know it hasn't been easy. Um, it, it, it hasn't been easy. They live in the South, so damn sure it wasn't easy. But um, they were just a great example. Um, he's great. Um, and I always tell people like there's that 20% and he falls into that 20% of genuity, like really, really, it ain't, I fuck with y'all. I fuck with, with her. I love her. I, she loves me. She loves my family. And that's that 20%. And then mm -hmm. that's that 80% where it's like fetish, bullshit, weird. I hate black people, but my wife is black. Like that type of shit. I believe that that exists. I really do. Yeah. Honestly and truly. Um, and then I've heard from, you know, other girlfriends um, that, and just even a, a past a guest um, host that I had. You know, they, they treat you better. They treat you better. They they want more for you. And I'm like, do they? <laughs> so the white niggas I done met, the they white, all look... <laughs> the 
the white cuz they cuz they niggas too. Oh, they niggas shit. too. The white niggas that I met, they really be looking at me like the exotic and I just be like, "Bro, I am such a nigga at heart. You're going to be so upset." You know, because Yo. it's that light it's that light light is right complex and baby, I'm a nigga through and through. You're going to be so disappointed at how black I am. You're going to be very disappointed. And I'm from the Caribbean, so that's like a double whammy, mad attitude. You're going to be tight. I just had this. I, had, <laughs> I just had a brief, uh, like the quote unquote exotic conversation the other day, and I think, I think we're all exotic depending on what our environment is. Like you True. know what I'm saying? Like if, if, like if, if, if I'm just if I'm a nigga and I live in a black neighborhood and I see black women all the time, whether they're super attractive or not. They're not going to be exotic to me because that's what I see all of the time. All the time, right? You know what I'm saying? But if I go over to fucking El Salvador or some shit like that, or matter of fact, not even if I go there, if if I see an, a woman from El Salvador, I'm going to label her exotic because, not because she's beautiful just because she's not from here, but she's different because she's different because she's not from here. Just right. like if I were to go over to El Salvador, I'd be exotic. But to y'all niggas, like, oh, that's, man, that's just a regular old nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right, 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 right. Just, it depends on your, on your environment. Yeah, that's it. I'm like, y'all, I, and like, even now, more so than ever, if a white man even tries to swing it my way, I'm just like, nigga, you probably think that I'm the house nigga. Like, huh. I just, I don't, I have a complex. I have such a bad complex. Like, I have a serious complex. Have like, you ever, but ha- wait, have you ever tried dating outside of your uh, race, though? Um, I, have you ever fucked outside of yours? How about that? Uh-uh. Nope. Really? I got, I got some head. <laughs> oh no! I got that's so that's so funny to hear a woman say, "Yo, I got some head, though." Like I got some top. Oh, now nah, I was in college, I, and I don't even know if he really. I don't. I don't even know if he really counts because he's Italian and his, he's Italian and Puerto Rican. And, like I don't know. I I guess. I guess. Because of that fifty percent Italian, I, and I mean all the are are all the Ital I say Italians because I'm ignorant. I, are all the Italians white for real from New York? No, they got a good amount of Sicilian blood in them. Period. So I mean, he don't really count. He don't really count. But not every time that I've tried to like entertain a white guy in the past, it just never really went anywhere. Like I just, it just never, it never did. I just wasn't interested. I don't know, but they, they it's just be they be weird. Like and I, I white folk really think because you light skin, like you're on their side and you're, you're you're like you get they like no nigga, like I don't fuck with y'all. Like I don't hey, fuck with y'all. The light skin from my experience, right? Light skinned black people are actually probably more pro black than a lot of people because like yeah, I, I'm assuming that you probably have to like continuously like prove your black. I've been mistreated as a light skinned woman so much in my lifetime i don't even talk about it <laughs> but this might be the first time i'm really talking about it on air but i've been mistreated as a light-skinned woman in, in my entire and lastly y'all i did an episode towards the end of 2020 um and it's titled simply 10 things i learned in 2020 um we're still living in a pandemic we're still going through some very interesting times in this country and in the world all together. Um, and I just wanted to talk about some things with y'all. Like it was just such a different time, such a different place that we're all in, you know, and um, it was heartfelt. I felt like I needed to sit down and get on camera and express and just let y'all know how I felt, how I wanted to move in life, um, the things that I was seeing, all of that it's such a great episode um so be sure to check it out and yeah and um it's just it was so i think i was in such a horrible place between march and june um i had hit this high in february january february we, we were all were in this high like 2020 is that year ah, ah, ah. like we we got it we it's lit da, da, da. you know we just knew we knew it was lit <laughs> like we knew this was gonna be our year and um, then between March and June, again, it was just, I was so anxious. My anxiety was through the roof. Everything just kind of like was slowly falling apart. We're at home. We can't see our families. Like it was just a lot, y'all. 
um, especially for like for me and for so many others. I mean, in comparison, I have been blessed. I will never ever sit here and be like, oh, this was the worst year of my life because it has not. It has been such a blessing for me. Um, and that's why I wanted to jump on and, and do this episode with you guys about, you know, the 10 things that I've learned about 2020, because there's been so much that I've seen, not only with my life, but with others on social media and just in general, like we are in some really, really interesting times and we have the opportunity in a window to transition and to really make things pop for ourselves, whether it's internally, whether it's financially. Um, and I know the finance part is a little bit difficult because a lot of us have lost our jobs. I lost my job, but I was able to really get my shit together, um, save money, branch out, hustle, work on my businesses, work on a business plan for another business. I mean, and just put those focuses where I needed to put the focuses, okay? Because putting my focus in that corporate job was not it, you know? And it took this year for me to really realize that. And even, you know, interviewing and getting my dream job and not being able to do it, it also put a lot in perspective for me because it said the universe was saying to me, hey, I'm kicking your butt. I'm pushing you out there because I need you to tap into who you really are and what it is that you need to be doing. You got some people that you need to meet. You got some time on your hands so that you can be more creative. I mean, the list goes on. So, so y'all, I'm wrapping up this episode and I want to thank you guys again so, so much for fucking with the Me To Be podcast on my 100th episode. I hope you guys like the clips um, that I added to this week's episode and be sure to stay tuned for some more content. I'm having a little celebration this week, so definitely stay tuned for some visuals for that. And yeah, 100th episode down in the books. Your girl is tired. She need a little mini break, but I will definitely be back. Stay tuned. Keep following me over on IG. Keep those notifications on for some content that's coming, okay? Don't, don't, don't sleep. Don't sleep on her. Okay, it's at the Mina B Podcast over on IG. And thank you guys again so much. I really, really appreciate all of you listeners, all of you viewers, and there is more to come. Bye.